Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my full review on the Wingman EDC Mach 3. And guys, I know it's been a while since I've done these kind of face cam reviews and stuff here. I've done some unboxings in the truck, and I think I did a couple reviews in there. But I recently got new lighting, and they're these big-ass studio lights, right? And my studio is my bedroom. So it's just a pain in the ass to move them all around. And I'm having trouble where you can see the lights kind of in my glasses. You can probably see it right now. And I got to angle them right. And it's just so much easier when I already have the lights over my desk to just do a desktop video, right? And I know a lot of you guys prefer that because you can see the knife <laughs> up close, right? Uh, but I always try to give you at least one video of a knife tabletop so you get a good view of it and everything um but i like to do these reviews face cam style so you can see my emotion and my sort of reaction to things and i feel like just watching somebody's voice is boring to me listening to somebody's voice watching i'm an idiot anyway um uh, i'm gonna try to do these more often again it's it's just i'm kind of lazy and i was sick for a long time on and off and not feeling great. So it was just easier to do desktop. Um, so you might see some more of these, but we'll see. Anyway, I picked this up off of Reddit, off of a great person. If you're watching, thank you so much, Fez. Um, and I basically put it in the want to buy section on Knife Swap. Now, you need to be careful with that. You can do it like I did. Just make sure when somebody reaches out, you really figure out if they're legit or not. Um, to me, I've been on Reddit long enough that I kind of know a lot of people. So it, it works out. Like I go one to buy and then somebody I know reaches out to me. So it works out. But um, just be careful with that because when you put one, stuff in the one to buy, you're basically asking people if they have this knife. So there's going to be scammers who are like, oh, this guy wants this knife. I'm going to pretend I have it. You know what I mean? as opposed to somebody posting a knife for sale. Those people are usually legit. Um, so anyway, I picked this up for 300 bones. They retailed for 380. I think some people said 350. Um, I believe Fez bought this off of Recon One uh, not long ago and then sold it because uh, they were paring down their collection. So I picked it up and it's a knife I've always been interested in. I just never bought one because I thought it was a frame lock. I had only really paid attention to the titanium one. So I found out this is a subframe lock and that made me really want one because I've always liked the design. I loved, loved the Mach 1, which is the budget sort of version of this, 180 bucks. Definitely worth the buy if you're in the market and that's your price range. The Mach 1 is fantastic. Um, highly recommend. You can watch my review on that. Maybe I'll link that below. Um, so yeah, so I get it and I fell in love instantly. Um, uh, there's some things I don't love about it, but mostly it's a freaking huge home run and, uh, Wingman EDC is making larger versions and that's going to be even better probably. Um, so I'm really excited to see what happens with this knife this year. Um, and yeah, so let's get into it, right? Uh, it was 300 bucks for me, secondary. Uh, materials, you have jungle wear, fat carbon, titanium, sub frame lock, and then you have an M390 belt satin blade here. Comes in at 2.875 blade length. I don't know any other specs. That's the one I know. It has a hole for deployment and a top flipper or front flipper. It's more of a top flipper, I guess. Uh, it is on bearings, and it has proprietary hardware, which kind of pisses me off. And if you watch the disassembly, you can see me get pissed off. So uh, be warned about that video. Uh, I just wish they would have done the same pivot and then just done a Torx in the center. They already have a circle there. Why wouldn't they have just dropped Torx in there instead? That's how I think that's how they did it on the Mach 1. The Mach 1 might have just had a plain pivot. And then the clip has the same thing. And I do have to complain a little bit about that. The clip, I can wiggle a little bit. I need to try tightening it again. But I recall tightening the shit out of it. So, 
Um, also, the centering is pretty damn good, but after disassembly, it was a pain in the ass to get back to this, to almost good, and that was, you know, I had to flip the bearings over and all this shit, um, so that sucked, but I loctited it, and she's good to go, so anyway, aesthetically, this thing is gorgeous, guys, it's a Tom Mayo design, it's OEM by Riot. And the company on the on the the branding is Wingman EDC. Uh, so I love the clip design. No uh, no hardware on the clip. That's cool. I actually like the speed holes for once on a knife because they're tiny and sort of not you know really pronounced or anything. Um, I love the mohawk on top. It, I think it just looks cool. I obviously love a pill shaped hole. It's like the uh, F five point five. And, uh, yeah, so when it's open, I think it looks sexy as well. Again, Tom Mayo design, sort of a clip point. Um, uh, I think that's really nice. I do for, uh, cutting, I'll get into it. I don't love it, but aesthetically it's gorgeous, right? You have this sort of rib backspacer and yeah, so that's what you get in terms of branding. You have the M390 on one side over here. Uh, and then you have a Tom Mayo design and the Wingman airplane over here. So very minimal branding. And the way they did it, the the, the font or whatever, it's very uh, opaque. Like, it's hard to see. So it's good. It's out of the way. Um, ergos. So this is kind of controversial for this knife. Uh, first up, you never hold it back here. Um, you always hold it up here, right? And for some people, this choil sucks. So the way their finger or their hand is designed, designed, their hand is, it doesn't land in there perfectly, right? So they end up sort of having a middle finger on this hump. And then it sucks. But for me, my index finger lands perfectly here. My ring middle finger lands in the choil and everything else from there wraps around. And it just feels amazing. I even have knife sticking out for such a small knife. Um, like, I could do a comparison. Uh, the Ferrum Forge Stinger is like three and a quarter inches. This is 2.875. So you can, you can get an idea of the size. It's small, right? Um, so there you go. But it just fits my hand really well. It's very comfortable. I enjoy this. This is such a great EDC for me because it's small. It's thin. Um, let's get into, um, well, real quick to finish off Ergo's. This jimping is very good. It's sort of aggressive. But I never end up on the jimping. I'm up here, right? So uh, it's flat up there. It's fine. Uh, but if you wanted to sort of do this, you could. Um, that jimping is pretty rough. Like in a good way, though. Not too rough. Uh, I like it. Um, yeah, so carry. Uh, it's very thin, guys. It's very thin, and it's pretty lightweight for its size. I think it's lightweight. Um, and it just tucks away. The clip is excellent. Good retention. Goes in and out of pocket like a dream. There's barely anything sticking out like that much. It carries like a dream, guys. It's just, obviously, it's right hand only, and you can't. I would never risk putting this in my left pocket just because it has the mohawk. You could easily accidentally deploy it or whatever, uh, especially after the burger incident of 2021. Um, yeah, that's not happening. But the carry is excellent, right-handed. I carry it in my back left pocket or my third pocket, sort of magazine pocket, if I'm wearing those type of pants. Um Sorry, my kid's monitor went off. She's trying to get comfortable. Got my mango LaCroix. All right, cutting. It's really good, guys. It's M390. Uh, it's got a, a decent factory edge. I did notice when I was cutting paper in the uh, first impressions or unboxing that it would catch, like, sort of up here. But I stropped it. Um for like a couple minutes, and that went away. It felt really good after that. Um, I basically have cut a few packages open, cut some shipping labels out, 
And, uh, you know, normal EDC stuff. I haven't had to do anything with cardboard since I've had it. So really light EDC stuff, but that's my EDC. So it is what it is, right? Um, I will say with that sort of clip point, uh, getting into packages, you just need to make sure you get the tip in. Uh, you know, otherwise you're going to get the belly here and you're not going to slice through. You might, but um, do I have a package? Hang on a second. I still have this package here from the giveaway. So if you put it, I'm trying not to show my uh, address here, so it's hard. If you put it, just belly first into the packaging and kind of swipe nothing's gonna happen you're not gonna cut through so you gotta just make sure you get tip in first and then swipe and then you're gonna rip right so it's common sense but i you know i just want to make that clear and then for labels right you get a really good pinch grip on this knife you sort of climb up here and it's just comfortable in the hand holding it like this, right? And I get good precision. But I have to get a good lean going to get that tip down into the paper. So it's not ideal. I did try flipping it over and doing it like this, which can be dangerous. My finger's on the uh, blade or you could pinch it like this. Now the tip is down and I basically have a worn cliff now, right? Uh, except it's tip only, but that's all I need. So this did work really well. You just need to be pretty sure of yourself and not have a super sharp edge. You know what I mean? Um, so cutting is good, guys. I don't know anything about the heat treat or how long the edge will last. That's not my sort of territory. Um, long term, maybe I'll follow up at some point. But um, I've enjoyed it. It has the Riot belt satin that I love as well. So uh, that's cutting carry Ergo's aesthetic sounds. So it's kind of muted. That, that's one of the negatives about the knife is the acoustics. They're just not very loud. I think that's partially because of the speed holes, the fat carbon, um, the, the small size of it. You know what I mean? Um, so you're just not getting a big thwack out. Uh, so it's okay. It's not like, it's not like something I would sell the knife over, but it's just not like super satisfying acoustically. It's like a four or five out of 10. It's not very great. Um, all right, so action. First thing, the detent is dialed. I mean, I've actually missed the hole before. See that? Uh, that's how good it is. Now, it's not like too strong. It's just that it's strong enough. And because of how small it is, sometimes my finger slips out. But like, I've never failed it trying to do a reverse flick. I've never failed it trying to do a thumb flick. It really fires out with the thumb flick. Um, and then same thing with the reverse. But then you have this top flipper that you can reach around. Awesome. You can also do a normal, traditional sort of Bic lighter flick, right? You can't do, like, the front flipper thing. You know, you got to get up here. But it works great. This is one of my favorite flipper tabs. Uh, next to next to the Trevor Burger tab, um, this is probably my favorite. I just love the way they designed it. It catches really well. Has very good jimping. And that jimping, this is going to sound weird. But if you've seen any of my Pena reviews, the jimping is spread out enough. And it's... it's uh, rough enough that it catches every time but yet it doesn't catch your skin in there so you don't have to clean this out all the time that's my biggest issue with Pena front flippers and even the flippers um the kickstop one i have does that uh, but yeah you can do a reach around um you can do the front flick you can do a reverse flick a thumb flick it's just endlessly fidgety right i love it um and then right-handed this is with the pivot tightened down. There is no play, no rock. Drops to the nail. Smooth shakedown. It's not like drop shut. You'll see 
it requires some shaking, but it's very smooth all throughout. You know, feel a little bit of something resistance wise, but not much. It's very Riot. Uh, this is on stock bearings because the skiffs just did not offer any. They actually made it worse. I think they were too thick. Um, the cage that is. Gillian's didn't work. Uh, I tried, no, I tried Delrin's. Uh, oddly enough, the 316th Delrin's fit on here, but I kind of had to like shove them over the pivot. And I think it just, it, it wasn't meant for it, but it kind of worked. You know what I mean? But uh, it's a five millimeter 116th uh, uh, bearing. But on this example, at least, the skiffs didn't work. On my Mach 1, they did work. It was weird. So I don't know. But anyway, the action is incredible. Uh, Left-handed, it's just as fidgety. Honestly, you can do all the same things. You don't need the clip to grab onto for the front flip. I tend to grab the scale. Um, so you just kind of grab it like this and flip it, reach around, you just grab wherever you want. And I love the Mohawk cause you just get up there, you get on the second or third jump and just rip it. And you don't have to worry about hitting the, the top cause it's tall. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Action. Fantastic. Um, negatives. Okay. So the sound is a negative. Um, for cutting the blade shape, I wish it was more of a sheep's foot or something. I don't know how it would look aesthetically with a sheep's foot, but functionally, I'd like it better, right? Um, lock bar access. That is my biggest gripe on this knife. Right-handed, you just don't... It's weird. You get used to it, and I am used to it now, so I guess it's okay. But it is a negative. It's just not, like, cut out. And there's no jimping or anything to catch you. So you just kind of put your finger in. And I, I would always kind of slide through. And then like at some point my thumb would push it enough to drop it. Um, but now I've gotten used to it. And I kind of go in on an angle and just push my thumb right into it. And it drops, right? Um, so I have no problems with it. But occasionally if I'm like sweaty or my hand's wet or whatever, if I'm rushing, I'll just slide right through there and miss it, right? Uh, because it's so smooth. It's all chamfered in there. It's all smooth, just like the rest of the knife, which is great, but I wish they would have done a little bit of jimping or just maybe left the lock bar out a little bit on this side. You know what I mean? Just had a little more sticking out so you could just bang it. But it does work. Left-handed, no problem. You just disengage, get it out of the way, flick it down. This is a fantastic knife for a lefty, as long as you're okay with the righty clip. You know what I mean? Uh, so overall, this is one of the, my favorite knives I've recently gotten in. One of my favorite knives, I think, period. It's just, it's endlessly fun to play with. It is a good EDC knife, solid cutter, great ergonomics, in my opinion, for a small knife. This fits my hand exceptionally well. Um, it is expensive. I mean, 380 bucks retail, 350, but you get fat carbon. I think it was 280 for the full tie, but that's a frame lock. So make sure you're right-handed, um, or don't care. But this knife design is really good guys. I mean, it goes from $180 with the Mach 1 with LMAX and G10, but really nice G10. It's basically like Carbon fiber, it's really good. Uh, Riot made, $180 up to $380. I'm sure there's some more bougie ones that I don't know about. Um, yeah, guys, it, it was a knife I didn't try in 21. And it would have been on my top, you know, five or top 10 list of knives for 2021 if I had gotten it then. So I really love it. I want to get a different color. So I might try to collect more than one of these. Uh, I don't think I want to get rid of the green, but I really want a blue or a white storm or if they do a purple or something, um, whatever. Like, I just want more of them. That's how good it is. Um, so I'm going to shut up. This is a long review. I apologize, but I really love this knife, guys, and I just like to get my thoughts out there. I recommend it to everybody. 
Uh, this one is not for sale, at least not now. Um, if I get a different color, it might be, but I might just keep them both. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Dislike if you hated it. Uh, tell me why. Um, but, man, this is a great knife. So, Wingman EDC Mach 3 review over. It's going to be hard not to carry this, though. Um, I've had a few lately, guys. The Satori 2.0, the Raptor, and now the Mach 3. My back left pocket has been a joy the last couple weeks. So, um, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.